Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games, and today we're getting back into our preview of Distant Worlds 2, and uh, we're seven years down the road here, the uh, calendar starts 27... 54, I believe. And so about seven years into the game, we've built some stuff. We've fought pirates. We've built mining stations, research stations, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, I'm really enjoying this so far, and we're going to keep playing here. I'm going to keep letting the game run and talking about different things as they pop up. Now, as you see, there's the full galaxy view. We have 700 stars in our galaxy. We know about two others now. So this is our home system, Marilia. There is now Segma with the Kaedans that are here. You can see they've got big craniums. Uh, and then we've got the cute little Tekans down here. And if we go and look at their home world and go over here, they're the Tekans. They kind of look like gerbils. Uh, we'll see if they are friendly pets or not. Uh, probably not, but we'll see. Uh, but these, the Kaedans, it says, hey, if you make friends with them, they're very loyal. That's what we know about them. And you can see right there, we've got our first scout ship heading over there. Explore the Segma system. Uh, the Express Wonder is going to head over there. We'll see if it gets blown out of the sky or not. Now, the pirates sold us a map, and that's how we know about this star system. But like I said, there are 697 other ones out here that we'll explore eventually. And now we have stable warp fields, so we can start jumping out to these other star systems, seeing what's there, seeing what we may want to build or colonize, etc., over here to the right, you can see a message, and this is going to be exciting because it'll allow us to get into the ship building and kind of figure out how these ships and how the components work and whatnot. And you see here, energy torpedo weapons research completed. So we completed that one. Uh, we had a nice head start on that. And also, I will say as Akdarians, you have a lot of research bonuses. So if you like the research and you want to get really advanced, uh, it's a good... Uh, faction to play certainly now what's interesting about this is the project provides the following advances epsilon torpedo small and epsilon torpedoes medium so now we're starting to get choices right because the medium ones will take up bigger uh, bays when we uh, go about building ships and so you know, it's going to be a trade-off of speed, you know, because it'll give us more weight, the bigger uh, components we have and whatnot. So anyway, we're getting more choices, including the advanced deflectors research complete. And you can see we've now got this deflection field generator version two. We'll also need to go up and queue more research because right now... Uh, we're researching exploration scanners. We're only 3% into that. But in 1.73 years, I think that's the last one that we had picked. So we'll have to go in there and look around. Uh, let's go ahead and dismiss these torpedoes very quickly and the deflector fields. And I know a lot of people are really interested about this in this game. So let's just go ahead and dive into the shipbuilding a little bit before we play the game today and we'll go to ship designs now you see we've got two construction yards those are the two places that we could build new ships whether they be st what they call state ships which are those that are government uh, owned and operated and then you have civilian ships which actually are the vast majority of ships in this game now as someone brought up in the comments you do build as the government you do build the civilian ships for them but you charge them for it so it's a good way to make money so so as you find more things to mine, they'll build more uh, cargo ships, they'll build more mining ships. They, you know, operate those kind of out of your control, but they pay you for building them. And so anyway, let's go to ship designs and we'll see all types here. Let's just uh, sort it here. Construction ship escort exploration ship those three we know pretty well they're the ships that we've really been dealing with so far then you have mining ship mining station research station which we've built one of those small freighter and small spaceport all right those are the ships or hulls that are available to us okay and if we go here you can get a nice breakdown of what is what so state ships these are ships owned and operated by us, the construction ships, 
the escorts, which are kind of, are not just kind of, they are a military vessel, and the exploration ships. Those are the state ships, okay? Then you have state bases, which is the research station and our small Akdarian spaceport. All right. So right now we have five that we own and operate, but then you have civilian ships. So the mining ships and the freighters are civilian ships. And then you have civilian bases, the mining station. Now you may have thought, hey, those are ours. No, we build them. We go out and build them. But uh, it's the civilians that actually use them. Now, when we go back here to all types, you can see how much the basic flavor of this thing costs. And right now we have the design and the retrofit on automatic. Okay, so that means the AI is doing all this. It's deciding how we retrofit these things. Uh, you know, the initial design and the retrofit is all under AI control now. And you can see based on whatever this auto design and retrofit is, this is how much they currently cost to build. Okay, one time shot. Then you see maintenance. This is how much it's going to cost to maintain them. They also give you the date. They give you the size, which can become important later, but we're not going to worry about that. You can load designs, save designs. You can add a new one, copy as new, upgrade. Okay, let's go to copy new. So we've got, let's pick on the escort and copy as new. Now, why am I doing that? Well, we could just do add new and have the escort hole pop up here with nothing in it, but I'd rather copy it with how, how it is now and talk to you about modification because we can always clear out the components that are already there, but let's copy as new, okay? And here you have an escort and you can see the different bays as they call them, okay? Um, you can see all the different kind of components now that are available to us, at least that can go on an escort, right? They're not going to have a mining drill up here when you're building an escort. These are all of the, the different bays that are here, um, and they're already filled up, right? Because I did copy as new. So this is what the AI has decided should be on an escort right now. But because we've copied it, we can mess around with this. We're not going to mess anything up. Um, now we can save it later and then have that be our what how the game builds escorts, right? We can flip it over to manual and say, this is how we want escorts. Now you can see the different colors. These are offensive weapons, all right? Yellow are engines, and some of these bays are empty. So right now, if we look down what's on an escort, basic command center, basic space reactor, basic crew systems, the warp bubble generator, right? Because we want this thing to be able to warp all over the place. So we're giving it the, or the AI is giving it the better one right now. Basic fuel cell, crew systems, all right? So we've got two of those, the basic crew systems, basic space reactor, and basic and another basic space reactor, all right? And you can see all of the different specs, what kind of fuel they use, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can see it all right here, how it upgrades the ship, right? Then down here, you've got your engines. So these are the basic crew type of items. And then you've got the ion engine here in yellow, all right? So the warp drive, they actually put up here in crew systems. Okay, sure. Uh, the ion engines are down here. Then your weapons are in red. Particle beam, we've got a particle beam medium and a particle beam small. Then we have two deflection field generators. And then in green are the sensors and proximity sensor array. Now we are researching, you know, even the better ones. And it would be interesting, and I guess we'll see, if the AI will upgrade this. I mean, it's a, uh, a military vessel, probably want better sensors, put it there. We have the new deflection field generators, and you can see there, it's version two. It's the one we just researched, right? Now, this is the size capacity that can go into the each individual bay, you know, 50, 50, 50. But down here, you can load on a big weapon up to 120. And over here, you can see the size of these things, right? And so it says 50 here, this is the limit. 
but if we look at basic crew systems, it only takes up 10, but you only have so many bays to deal with, right? So everything in white doesn't pop up here on the visual, but on yellow, you can see it over to the right, start to, or not start to, it does enlarge when you roll over that bay, all right? Let's take them all out. Right click, right click, right click, right click. Oh, before we do, well, that's fine. Over here, you can see the size. You're limited by the by the size here based on everything you load in. Uh, you have the whole size which starts this. So this 125 goes into this 287 number. So this is your floor. This is your ceiling, and every component you load on here has a different size, and you can't go over 375. Not until we research better escorts, and then this could potentially go up to 500, let's say. I'm just making that up. It'll also tell you as you change things how much crew capacity you have. Uh, and how much crew you need to operate it. Maybe some weapon needs a lot of crew. Uh, we'll look at that when we go into it. Build cost, okay, this is gonna go up and down. Let's just take off uh, this ion engine and see how that changes anything there. And now you can see the build cost went down, the crew capacity went down, right? Basic space reactor. And it's gonna keep, you know, it's gonna keep uh, modifying this in real time as you, take these things off and put them on. And then also down here, the ratings, the attack strength. Well, we just took the weapons off. So we have zero attack strength. If I went up here and said, you know, let's click on that bay, Epsilon Torpedo Medium, we put it in there. Now the attack strength is 12, right? Defense strength, 4.2. Speed maneuvering, scanners. Well, we took the scanners out. Let's click them on. Proximity sensor array. It's the only one I could pick, so put it in there. 3.9 uh, energy collection rate reactor storage capacity so on and so forth then we get down here and you can see how much energy the different things take uh, output static engines weapons hyperdrive static you know all of these different um, stats as you build things as you put things on as you take things off um, all right, let's take the rest of these out because I want to show you something here that's very helpful, which is up here, it says four defects and two recommendations. What does this mean? Well, there are four things here that we have to have on the ship or really it's a completely defective design. We And it's in red. You can see needs more crew. It must have fuel storage. It must have a hyperdrive and military sh ships must have weapons or fighters, okay? Well, this isn't big enough to have fighters. Those are the big carrier type ships, all right? And then two recommendations. It says consider adding energy collectors, all right? And top speed is lower than average for military ships. The empire wide average is 75. Well, that's good to know. And when we get down here, you can see the speed of this in different modes, right? When it's in slow mode, cruise mode, sprint, and how f how much energy it uses, it'll also tell you how fast it takes to get up to certain speeds, all right? Jump initiation time is very important, so on, so forth. Jump range, jump accuracy, all of those things. Okay, well, let's start adding things in here. Now, defects. We need more crew, Okay, we also are going to need a command center. And if we look here at the command center, it's a size 8, so it can fit into any of these 50 bays. All right. And you're going to need a command center essentially on every ship. You know, just that that's just one of those basics. You need some, you know, you need your commander to be able to look out a window somewhere. Um, it's size 8. Crew requirement is 5. What's our crew uh, requirement look like up here? Crew capacity, uh, 15 of 25. If we hover over this, it's not going to tell us that, but that's fine. We'll see it change as we put things on here. Um, so crew requirement, five static energy used, two per second. Okay. It 
costs four steel, four polymer, <clears throat> and four silicon. Now, as you're building things or starting to think about it, really pay attention to that because that'll also give you an idea of the kind of resources you need to be looking for or mining, building mining stations on or near bodies that have these things, right? So steel is an obvious, that's going to be in everything. Maintenance savings 10%, crew capacity 15 damage reduction 2%. Uh, okay, it helps with a little bit with damage repair, or no, that's how fast it can be repaired, got it. Component ion defense is 5, countermeasures plus 10, and targeting is plus 10. Well, of course, if you have a command center, it's going to be better for you offensively and defensively, right? So let's put that on there. We'll click on that, come down here, basic command center. We'll put that, oh, I already had one on here. Take that off. There we go. Okay. Basic command center, now we've got 15 of 15 on the crew capacity. We'll also take the ion engine off. Now it really makes sense. We've got a crew capacity of 15. We currently have five crew because the command center crew requirement is five. They'll automatically load a crew on there, okay? So, but our capacity, just given the ship, and now that we've got this on here, is 15. Well, I don't want that there. I actually want it right here right at the top, the command center. Okay, so that's the top thing. Now, we're going to need more crew. We've still got five defects. Must have reactors, storage, engines, hyperdrive, and we must have military weapons, or what's the point of having a military ship? I think that's pretty fair. Basic crew systems. Okay, let's pick on that one. And, oh, it's going to give us a you can see these things side by side if we click on one after, like when we're selected on this one and we roll over this one, you can see, you can compare them to each other. So that could be very important when we get down here, right? Because if I click on Epsilon Torpedo and, and go over the, you know, I'm clicked on the medium, I go to the small, you can see the comparison between the two you know damage rate negative 2.33 for the small negative 1.18 oh that's very helpful actually okay cool uh basic command center we've got that basic crew system let's click on that uh that'll give us another five crew it's a size 10 oh that reminds me what is this size click off that go there get off that Size is eight. Okay, basic crew system. Got it. Um, crew requirements five, static energy use, so on and so forth. Well, we're definitely going to have basic, basic crew systems. It gives us a better ion defense, damage reduction. Crew capacity now all of a sudden is up 75, and it also gives us maintenance savings. All right, let's click right there. So now we've got a basic crew system, and you can see the crew capacity went up 75 to 90, and but it only takes five crew to operate these systems, all right? So that's a good way to get your uh, capacity up because now we put this nice-looking little box here uh, that's crew systems on, okay? Basic fuel cell, let's look at that. What does this do? If we look down here, it just stores fuel. So if you get out here and all of a sudden uh, you get low on fuel, you have some sort of storage. We also have a basic space reactor. Click on that, come back to it. It uses Caslon uh, to turn this into energy, essentially. So let's put this on here. Basic space reactor. Okay, we'll put it right there and you can see that takes crew to operate, but it didn't up our capacity, right? So we put that on there, great. Uh, we know that we're gonna want, well, see, now we've got standard armor down here. We know we're gonna want the sensor array here. So let's click on that. What is it gonna do for us? Jump tracking 5%, trace scan range. You can see that scan range, 1 million. Um, component ion defense. Okay, so we're going to click on that, put it right in here. And then if we roll over this, you can see it says sensor and it'll light up over here as well. And you can see the bay we put that in. All right, um, ion engines, let's put that on. Let's actually take it off first. And then let's look at the static energy 
used here and look and see if it does anything for our speed as well. All right. Um, and you can see shields down here, boarding ability, sensors. I mean, it's amazing, right? Uh, it's amazing all of the stuff here. Resources required to build, 70 steel, 10 polymer, so on and so forth. Let's go to where we can see our speed. I got the need for speed. Uh, and let's put on one of these ion engines. And now you can see its cruise speed is 57. It can sprint at a 64. It uses two per second at cruise speed, 2.8 per second at sprint speed. Um, really cool. So it shows you right here, the static energy used, just kind of the energy curve, right? Uh, ion engine, let's put another one on there. Now it's 80 and 91, we use four and 5.6. Excellent, looks, looks good. Um, and they decided to put those on the back, no matter what. Now I had selected on that, but that's fine. Uh, okay, so cool. Now then, what else is it's telling us is is defective? We need fuel storage. Okay, let's go here. Basic fuel cell. I mean, that's our fuel storage. But we also have energy collector here. Uh, we could put an energy collector on here, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, okay, let's go to basic fuel cell, and we'll click right there and now it's in and it's removed that defect must have a hyperdrive well we've now got the skip drive if we want it to stay in our own system we could just put the skip drive on here and you may say well why would we do that well let's compare the two all right um and I've got the warp bubble to the right. So this is telling us, you know, the pluses and minuses over there, how much better the warp bubble generator is than the skip drive. You can see hyperdrive speed, 10K to 200K. So it's plus 190K in speed. <clears throat> the jump range is 118 million miles better. The accuracy is uh, actually better, right? It's closer, even though that's in red and negative. Um, because it's 45, you're going to be within 4,500 miles of where you wanted to jump to instead of 5,000. Uh, hyperdrive energy use, it actually uses quite a bit more energy. And that's maybe something you want to keep in mind. If you want to keep something just as your defense in your own system, you may not be need this bigger jump drive, right? Uh, for military ships, you're probably always going to want it. But for the smaller ships, like the mining ships and whatnot that are in your system, you probably actually wouldn't want this. It uses a lot more energy, which fuel turns into energy. All right. So you're going to have to mine a lot more fuel for that. Jump initiation time is better. It's three seconds faster. Uh, hyperdrive recharge time is two seconds faster. Okay. Well, for a military ship, we're going to do the warp bubble. And we'll put that on there. All right. Now we're just down to one defect. And you can see here, now we're 75 on cruise, 85 on sprint, 87,000 when we go to hyperdrive. But it does cost 85 uh, here for the energy. All right. So warp, uh, warp bubble generator is on. Uh, we've got the two ion engines. We're going to need some weps weapons. And... You can see this is the big weapons bay. Like I said, when you get more advanced with the holes, these numbers are going to change. They're going to go up. Uh, they're going to change a little bit with the different holes. But we've got space for one big weapon, right? So we may as well get the best thing we've got. We could go particle beam or we could go torpedo. And this is what I was talking about as far as you, you will have some choices to there we go. I'll just keep it right there. Okay, so to the left, we have the torpedo. To the right, we have the particle beam. You can see uh, here that the weapon countermeasures, uh, the, cl oh, I see. Torpedo is a standoff weapon. The particle beam is a close-in weapon. You can see the two different sizes and the crew it takes to load, you know, to have this on your ship. You can see how much energy it takes to uh, operate this and what it takes to build these things. All right. And then you see weapon countermeasures. So the particle beam is going to be plus 70. It's better against countermeasures. Targeting, it's better. Okay. 
but that's because the torpedo is a seeking missile and so targeting kind of goes off right i mean you shoot it out and then it goes and seeks its target uh damage type standard impact all right and then you see the epsilon torpedo does a lot more damage well why would that be uh you can see the damage rate is actually much slower so if you you know the particle beam is going to fire off a lot faster bombardment infrastructure okay it's going to bombard the enemy infrastructure military bombardment you could do that with torpedoes uh bombardment quality okay so on and so forth you get the idea you can then see down there speed so the particle beam is going to go much faster 5,000 clicks per second as opposed to 350 of the torpedo well once you start facing tougher ships uh or faster ships you know from other uh races or factions you know they may be too fast for you to hit it with a torpedo um you can see here shield bypass negative 40 shields have uh, a good you know they're better against torpedoes armor bypass however torpedoes are better so there's a real trade-off there um energy per shot it costs more for torpedoes all of this said i think we're going to go with the particle beam now that doesn't mean that you wouldn't want some of these with torpedoes and maybe that's why you do two different designs you do an escort that is a torpedo type escort and another one that is more particle beam you know and that way you whatever you run into you've got one of each type or a, a few of each type and nothing can completely stop you offensively right but as the holes get better you should be able to load both the types on so let's take the particle beam medium and we'll put it in there i like the particle beam better then we have a bay that only has a size of 19 well if we look at here you know these are the epsilon right epsilon torpedo medium why don't we do epsilon torpedo small and if I click on that and look at the difference with the plasma torpedo, you can see the Epsilon torpedo is just better. Uh, you could go down through here. The damage is more. The damage rate is more. And so the Epsilon is better than the plasma. You could, you know, look at all of this here. It does take more energy, but of course it does. It does more damage. So the Epsilon torpedo, we could actually put that there. Now it's just the small. So when I was talking about before, maybe on your other design you do the medium torpedo and the small particle beam right so that it's more of a torpedo ship okay uh then down here we've got standard armor or we have a deflection shield generator well you can see we've got two uh places here for armor and we just see the blue there defense so why don't we do both let's do deflection field generator and we'll put it into that bay and then we'll take the standard armor and put it into that bay and now you see our defends up to 34 before that our defend was two so uh let's do this again we'll put standard armor in and then we'll go to deflection field generator right there and then if we're going to compare the two if we're going to compare the two okay there we go uh, you can see shields versus armor shields uh, deflection field uh, size 15 against size 10 we already knew that uh, it takes five crew to do the deflection field generators okay and that's why you wanted to add the component before the uh, you know crew bay because it allows you then for these things that aren't adding any crew capacity but take crew you can load that on right so energy it takes energy for the deflection field generator obviously standard armor on your ship doesn't take any energy then you can see what it takes to build them the rating now that's an armor rating that's 72 so don't let that fool you uh the deflection field generator is going to be better against you know fired weapons right as far as like torpedoes something like that so that's the deflection field generator and if we ever want to look at it we can go read about all of these things so it's got four recommendations left uh we do not have kuprika so it's telling you we'll have to buy that and uh, because of that it's going to be a more expensive ship 
Uh, hyperdrive energy requirements combined with static energy requirements are higher than re reactor energy output. Hyperdrive speed will be scaled down. Okay. Consider adding energy collectors and top speed is lower than average. You can see a sprint speed is 72. Now it's hyper is way over that. Why is that? Well, we, we put armor on here, which really slowed it down. So maybe we load another ion engine on here directional thrusters you can see what that would do but let's put another ion engine in here uh right there okay now our speed is up to 89 and you can see that recommendation went away but we need more basic fuel cells we've got to store up more energy it's higher than the reactor basic space reactor okay well let's go to basic space reactor load that on here and now it says it's okay now it says we need more crew well okay let's go up here and do basic crew systems now remember this gives us 90 potential crew i believe yep yep that's the one we were on if we come down here basic crew systems now that's off uh and now you could see look we, we probably need an energy collector. You know, you can go back and forth with these all the time. So we put another energy collector on. What's the price of this ship now? It's going to be ridiculous. Well, uh, where is that? The price of the ship. It's up here somewhere. Yeah, well, $28.94. That's actually not terrible. We still don't have enough uh, crew space, right? So we would have to figure that out. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The size is over. I was at my mind was on crew. We've got plenty of crew space now, so we could take one of those off. OK, that's good. And that brought our size down. Did you see the red? It gave us a defect when we put that other crew system on because it made this the size too big. OK, so let's get out of there. We could save that and have all escorts built that way. But let's go back and look at the the escort as it is right now and just see how close we got to what the game thinks is the best to have right now basic command center okay we had that basic space reactor basic crew systems warp bubble generator basic fuel cell then it had two more space reactors on here all right that's going to be pumping out the energy uh we have one storage and then down here you see we had two ion engines it decided to do the particle beam medium and the particle beam small so the game does not the ai does not think we should be loading torpedoes on here it likes the particle beams uh in both in both bays which is interesting and it also does both deflection shield generators and if we look over here 42.6 well, what if we put this? Well, see, the standard armor is what really, I think, slowed us down uh, because the armor is heavy. And then we've got the proximity sensor array. Okay, so that's how it's being built right now. What are the recommendations the AI is telling itself? Consider adding energy collectors. Well, all of our basics are filled up here in white. And then top speed is slower than average because the average uh is 75 and if we look down here our cruise speed's 58 sprint speed 66 right it can always go slow and use no energy and that's what i was saying uh nothing gets stuck out in space it will limp back home all right but that's basic ship design how it would work here now obviously there it goes so much deeper that you can think about these designs for a day how you want to do it or you can say you know what i like what the ai is doing but i want to add one or two things so you can edit it save it and that's how escorts will be built from then on um you know it's kind of just up to you or you can just let the ai do it that's what we've been doing so far and if we come back out here you can you know figure out how you want to build all of these let's just edit a mining station supposedly here for a second and you can see what's different here research lab it's a size 60 well luckily the hole for our research labs right now can handle a size 60 component 
Uh, I don't think that's by accident. Basic fuel cells, basic space reactors, energy collectors. There's a re another research lab on here. So you can see the hole is quite different, the bays that you can put on here. It's got defense. It's got some weapons that it can fire. It's decided to load on because these are, you know, fairly expensive and they're, you don't, you don't want your research interrupted at any point. So they actually put quite a few weapons on here. Medium particle beam, Epsilon torpedo, Epsilon torpedo, and a medium particle beam. This thing's badass a little bit. 38.9 on the attack strength, 69.2 because it did load armor on here. And you can see it's got four bays for defense because it's a stationary base so it's got more bays and more things that we can put on here as opposed to the escort that only had two. So it did put armor on, or it is putting armor on our research labs now. And then we have three deflection field generators. It doesn't have any sensors because it's not looking for anything. It's floating around a bot, you know, a heavenly body and it's doing research. So it doesn't have any of the scanners on. It does have a docking bay, and that's a new thing. Purple right here, you can see it's we have a docking bay. Now, all of these different components, as we research, will get better and better and better. They may also get bigger and bigger and bigger, so we'll have to be researching new holes all of the time uh, and upgrading our ships as we go along. All right, let's play the game. I just wanted to show you that because I know a lot of people are really interested in that, uh, as, as you should be. If you really like this game and you want to get into it, building your own ships can be a, a game within the game. So anyway, you can see all of the ships we have out here in our system. Most of them are actually civilian ships. You can see the stationary ones we have here, most of them all mining stations. Now, somebody said in a comment, Gosh, this seems overwhelming. You know, every tick looking at all these ships, 90% of them are civilian, going to be civilian ships. And really, that operates in the background. It's happening based on what you do, but your civilians are going to be doing that. And so you don't really have to keep track of them, right? What we have to keep track of really are the exploration ships, the construction ships, and the military ships. And as of right now, if you go to uh, construction, all right, let's click on that. We can go down and you can see there are construction ships. So we have five of them, right? I have one of these on manual. Let's take that off and put it on auto automatic because that was the one there we go. That was working on the Crimson Scourge. Well, it's now fixed it. So let's put that on back on automatic. Okay, so we have five construction ships. We have the Crimson Scourge, and then we have six. One, two, it's going to now be seven um, escorts, military ships here. We will add that into the first fleet. I'm going to have all of our escorts in the first fleet for now. The Crimson Scourge will not join it. It does not want to, it's not, it's almost like an independent ship, all right? So we've got these military ships, right? You click on military. We do have a research station, but okay, it's out researching. We have the five construction ships, all right? And then mining, new mining locations, we could go look at those, but all we have to do is click if we want a construction ship to go out to them. Okay, and then you can see all of the current mining locations we have, including Amsasia, but here are where we have built mining stations. But once we build them, the civilians take control of them. Okay, and then we have the exploration ships. And right now we have one, two, three, four, five, right? I've got the one going out to that other system, segment two. We have one retrofitting be interesting to see what they put on there. Maybe it's the new deflector shields, potentially. Uh, maybe it's the new sensors. We did get those, or nope, we're still researching those. Um, these, yep, these three are coming in for retrofit. This one's jumped over to Sigma, and this one's out in our system somewhere. If we back up, it'll light up, and you can see where it is as you hover over it. So it's all the way out here at the edge of our system. Um, and he has not been retrofitted yet. So he, 
you're seeing he can only go that far. This, as it retrofits, is going to be able to go a lot further than that. As you can see, he's jumping over here. Uh, but if we go here, he can go a, you know, a long ways. So anyway, uh, let's play the game. But those are the main ships you really have to worry about. And so I'm going to back up here and maybe just kind of follow him into Segma. If he's going to make it. Come on, buddy. Here he comes. I mean, see, it takes a little while. Even with this bubble field generator, they try to make it, you know, I, I hate to say realistic, but it's really based on the speeds and your bubble warp generators will get better. At some point, you'll just be able to go whoop and you're there. But instead here, I mean, we're warping, but it takes a while to get to a new star system. Assign mission. Uh, that looks pretty good. We need Kuprika. We just saw that. So we're going to build a mining station there. It was telling us there's a construction ship that's not doing anything. Uh, another thing, you can see all of the activity now uh, as the civilian ships. There's a lot of them out there now. Uh, and there's a whole economy going on. Now we're making money off of it. So that's good. Now our escort ships, let's click on this. He's out to Sigma. This is retrofitting. These are retrofitting. I think this one already did, but when one of these comes out at ret of retrofit, let's just do this one. I want to do something with it. Oh, where's he off to? Oh, he's coming back to retrofit. He's not there yet. Okay. Here's the next one. He's warping back to Amsasia as well to our spaceport to retrofit. Okay, when one of these gets done, I'm going to send them off to some system we don't know anything about. How about that one, right? We don't know anything about this, uh, but we're going to have them go explore it. And it'll be the first one we've explored that we know nothing about. Oh, he's about to get over here now to start exploring around Segma or into the Segma system. So I want to watch him. Whoa, he's coming in hot. Uh, you can see when you zoom in how fast it looks like they move. Let's pause because Minimus Pirates offer us protection. Uh, do we even need that right now? I don't think so. The Citizen Corsairs. All right, show me. 125 a month. No, we've got the Crimson Scourge right now. We're going to reject that. Goodbye. Uh, and then show me. Yeah, we're going to reject that as well. These guys, well, we're not seeing how strong they are there. We're going to reject that deal and say, adios, my friend. Okay, uh, and we'll dismiss these. Decline. I don't know why we have to do it up here, too. I still think that's because it's a beta thing. But here now is us in a, no, a new system. If we get right down, there's our explorer ship. All right, back, back up. And you can see he's on the outer edges of this solar system. Be interesting when we get over here. We can say hi to the Kyadians. Uh, say, wow, that's a real interesting cranium you've got there, my friend. Now, the great thing about this game is as long as we look up here and make sure that uh, if we go to the... Con well, we can go to mining if we want to do it here, but let's do the construction ships. Let's just make sure they're all doing something. We've got one retrofitting, building, retrofitting, building. They're all doing something, right? Now let's go back to explorer ships, survey in the Morelia system. This is the one, pause, uh, Assigned mission, this is the next thing that the game is telling us this builder or this construction ship should be doing. I don't like that one. Let's go to uh, new mining locations. There it is right there. These are the ones we already have. This is new ones. We have construction ships out at these two places. Where else do we have someplace interesting to build? Nowhere, really. It's telling us to build one here. All right. We'll send him off to that one. But we're starting now in our own system to really tap out where we can build new mining stations. Um, okay. Let's keep going. Let's 
bump that up to times two. I always mean to do that. Yell, yell at me through the screen if I don't. Let's go to research very quickly then. Let's go up here and just look through. We're doing the exploration scanners. It's telling us basic colonization is what it wants us to do next. Now that's interesting, right? We don't even have the technology for colonization ships yet. If we go up to shields, reactors, troops, weapons. Oh, I think it may be right in this area. Shipboarding, star fighters. Now this was, you know, how you get the fighters. Armor plating. Oh, here we go. Uh, improved escorts down here, you can see. So military, system patrol starships, basic troop transports. We can't do that yet because must first research ship boarding to do that. Space construction, enhanced construction, uh, enhanced space stations. But here, expanded civilian ships, small colony ship. You see there now this would take 1.4 years i don't see why we would uh do colony explore you know figuring out how to do colonies if we don't even have colony ships yet so i'm going to queue that up next pay costs all right and that'll also give us a medium mining ship, small passenger ships, and small fuel tankers. So there are full fuel tankers in this game. Now these again are all civilian ships, even the colony ships, all right? And then after that, we will do basic colonization, pay the cost, and put that third. Okay, let's exit research and see how our exploration's going here. Assign mission. Sure, we'll build another one there. We may be overbuilding. You get to a point where the resources aren't important enough and if we go back over our home system here down to Omsasia the resources sometimes won't be important look at all of what's going on here at the space dock at some point we're gonna have to retrofit or build a new spaceport right we're not quite there yet let's see what just happened advisor suggestion sure we'll build one more New scientist appears, okay. So now we have a new scientist that should put it out on that research station. Critical research uh, breakthrough. Our scientist Rocky Thonda at Urtit has made a critical breakthrough while researching exploration scanners. This is initiated crash research. So this is what we're currently researching. That will double the speed and that's why it's good to have good scientists. And before we do this, one thing I wanted to look at here is for research, you can see maximum potential research. This is your empire's maximum potential research points from the population of your colonies and the labs at your research stations. This includes all research bonuses, okay? Actual research output, 87. Um, and you can see, it based on how we're funding it and how many labs we have. If we go to the building queue down here and we go to our yards, let's just go to Omsasia here. Omsasia, there we go, build. You can see right now we can only build escorts, construction ships, explorers, no research uh, stations because we would get no bonus from that we've got we've got a research station and it's handling all of the research that we could be doing now and if we go out here to it now i could have also done that by going to um, stationary bases and you can see the earth heat research center uh, when I say no bonuses, and the reason it's saying there are no bonuses, this is getting a plus nine here uh, because it's around Urtit, and this at Urtit, we're getting a bonus. So you only want to be building these research centers where you're getting bonuses for research. Otherwise, you know, it can handle the capacity of putting out more scientists. And if we go look at our characters, leader, ambassador, general, scientist, uh, we have a scientist at Urtit, that's Rocky Thonda. Then we have Gayut Idari out there at Urtit. And then we have the new scientist just waiting here. We could transfer him to the research center. We've got him on auto right now. Let's just do that. We'll transfer him out there and off he goes, okay? 
Uh, but right now we're not above capacity and we have no other places to build that give us a bonus. Urteat does give us a bonus. Uh, where can we see that here? Whoops. No. One location bonus. There it is. Plus nine engine research. So plus nine from Urteat. And that's why it's saying we can't build any more research labs because there's no bonuses available anywhere. You may say, I want to build one anyway. Well, they're uh, too bad. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get off that. Let's go over to that other system. So that's Marilia. That's really filled up with information. We'll go back over here to Segma. Double click there, you can see their star, we back up, and you can see we're now out here exploring, and we can go down and you can see him sending his drones out. Now he, see all the drones that are going down to, what is this, a planet? It is. It's Segma 2. It's a desert savanna planet. That's what we know about it so far. We don't know the quality. He hasn't completely uh, explored it yet. You can see here it's still showing us unexplored. Unexplored. Rocky Metallic Moon. We may be able to get some resources off that. Uh, over here. Wow, that looks beautiful. What is that like? Earth? Segma 1 is a forest planet. Interesting. Its quality is 59%. There are two unknown items. And now you can see we're starting to discover things at Segment 2. Succulus wood. Okay. It provides plus four colony development. So it's a luxury good. Uh, people like this. Looks like the Redwood Forest out here. Trade offer. The Lost Warriors offers unknown ancient ruins for 11,000 credits. Well, now this is an interesting one. Uh, because unknown um, ancient ruins would give us a development bonus in our colony. So if we go back over to our star system and we look at Urteat, which we can just do right here by double clicking on it. Uh, our, oh, and you can see we're building up and now recruiting more troops. That's happening automatically. And you can see the NATO symbol for infantry here. But if you look up here, uh, right here. Development's now at 82%. 42% from population, 9% from those ancient Akdarian ruins, and then 31% from resources. And so we found a lot of luxury goods in our own system. Oh, that reminds me. We want to send one of these guys out somewhere else. So I've got this on manual now. This is just at an asteroid. I know that he came in to refit. So I'm going to turn him on manual as well. The glowing discovery. Let's go to the glowing discovery. He's uh, whatever. We got a lot of ships around there. We've already looked at that a lot. Let's send him out to this star. All right. And there we go. I just right clicked on it. And now explore unknown star system, unknown star. Cool. All right, and now we're really starting to expand a bit. So on segment two, we, you know, could possibly build a colony there, but it's all based on the suitability. And so <clears throat> there are resources here. We could also build a mining station here. And because we have those warp drives, if it if this was a really good planet for resources, it doesn't look bad. The other 44% uh, that is a luxury good as well. What is that called? Uh, Dokan tea. Well, we're already getting that in our system. That's not going to really give us a whole, it's not going to really give us a boost at all. And warping back and forth is going to take too much fuel, really, just to probably get this wood. Now, we may eventually do it, or we may come over here, conquer these people, build a colony there, but I don't really want to get in that kind of warfare uh, this early on. So we're going to dismiss that. These guys, we're going to decline this. I don't think we need it. Uh, and on we go. Still on times two. And I want to see this ship warp over here to this new system eventually. All right. And, you know, we're not getting any messages over here. So, well, as I say that, we do. Uh, oh, so see this, the game does want to go out to segment two and get this. This is something we don't have. We'll tell you what, let's just do it. So we're building in another system that could be kind of fun. It probably, I don't know. It's probably not really worth it unless, you now 
we're going to do it. If we build the mining station, the civilian ships are going to be the ones going back and forth. Uh, so I guess that's fine. I, okay, now I just talked myself into it. And we'll be building our first mining station in another system. You can see we got quite a bit of money. That's looking good. I think we're good on construction ships. I mean, I don't think we need uh, really any more. I mean, they're keeping up with demand. Uh, we get, anytime they're idle, they pop up over here. Oh, the glowing discovery is under attack. The exploration ship, the glowing discovery that we were sending to that new system is under attack by Gravelix. What the hell is that? At Yitness in the Yitness system. What in the hell is going on? Okay, let's get over here. So this star system is called Yitness. Oh, don't you dare freeze on me now. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, I don't even see this Gravelix. This looks cool. This is a cool system. Evidently, every one of these stars, basically when it is going to procedur procedurally generate, is going to be uh, very unique. I mean, they're just like no two alike. Uh, that's good. Okay, well, let's, where did my glowing discovery go? Show me. There we go. Um, okay, well, let's see this thing get attacked with what looks like a space spider. We may lose an exploration ship. Well, I don't know. He's coming in here to Yitness. I don't see them yet, but are we in their tractor beam? Uh, there are tractor beams in this game. Uh, okay, he's coming in. Maybe he got past that thing. I hope he did. My gosh, that thing looks scary. Uh, explore the Itness system. Now nah, he looks he looks okay over here. We'll come back to him if he gets under attack again. Let's go back to segment two. Whoa, we got okay. Independent colony of humans encountered. We have encountered a new independent colony of humans at Jura Jadur 3 in the Jura Jadur system. The humans are naturally slightly hostile toward us. We can attempt to colonize them by sending a colony ship. Alternatively, we can invade and take over the colony by landing troops. Initial communications with the humans have gone very poorly. We accidentally insulted them. Of course we did. Humans are very thin-skinned. Research projects are available in our tech tree that can increase our understanding of humans. We should research those projects. Interesting. So they've already got a restricted trade agreement with some of our pirates. And as you see here, they're an independent colony. So they're all on their own. They're not part of some empire or something. Um... But everybody's kind of an independent colony at this point, right? I mean, we've only got one colony as well. They don't really like us, guys. Okay, they're negative 18. Okay, well, let's, uh, why don't we send our ambassador over here? Why not? Uh, okay, let's get out of here very quickly. Let's get off that diplomacy uh can we do it from here diplomacy oh this is what the ai has already set us on we have different choices here oh actually we don't can we go if we go to manual there we go uh or invasion when able let's try peaceful colonization i'm willing to give these humans a chance okay and so we're going to start doing diplomacy there Strategy diplomacy. Okay, cool. So the AI's already set that. Uh, excellent. Well, that's why it's a good thing. Now, if we go to our characters, we have an ambassador, Gaiut, uh, Jibros. Let's see and see Almania too. That's where those gerbils are. Then we have Jurajadur, a human independent colony. Well, so we can send him out wherever we want. We could also send him over to the big-headed things. Uh, let's back up. Now, where were those located? Jurajadur. All right. Well, let's find it. That's Yitness. Oh, wow. We've started to uncover a lot of things out here because... Oh, interesting, because we know about the Alemania 
we've started to uncover a lot of stars out here. So that's Jirajapur or Jirajadur. Uh oh wow. Okay. Cool. Our agent. Oh, look at this. So we've already sent a spy. Uh, the AI did, because we have that automated. Our agent, Rocky Zabros, has evaded de detection after successfully carrying out the mission to steal the territory map of the Almania Corporation. Okay, so we didn't know that was going on. But we sent a spy down here to blend in with the hamster people. Uh, okay, I, I, how did he get away with that? He looks like kind of a catfish. Uh, I don't know, but he did, and now we've got all of their information on these other systems. Cool. Uh, characters can be interesting in this game. Um, so do we really want to go there? Not really, with our ambassador. I think I'd rather go up here to Segma. Now, we've already, uh, the AI has already set up diplomacy with them, um, but I think I want to send our ambassador there he is i'm going to turn him to manual and i want to send him out to segma one to the kaiden independent colony i think we'd like to take that so i'm going to transfer him there and you can see transferring to segma one it tells you the eta it's not like he just automatically appears there he's got to go by ship and he won't be there until 2060 2763 oh it's going to be like a whole year before he gets there okay well cool we got an ambassador out awesome uh and we got a spy that got a spy map from the gerbils that's exciting i didn't know that there was spy stuff going on you know i like that exploration scanners research completed now all of our exploration ships should be coming in to refit as soon as they can um now the ones I have on manual, no, they they will continue on, but the autos will be coming back. Oh, look at this! Some of them are trying to jump out to that star. One of them was Marilia. Yeah, the weary son I've got on manual. He's jumping out here on his own, or I mean on automatic. Did I say manual? On automatic, he's jumping out here on his own to go look at that star system. Out here at Yitness, we know we got scary spider creatures. Uh, didn't like those at all. Is that it? Yeah, that's the Gravelix. Let's go check this sucker out. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, it's a space spider. He's coming after us. Uh, oh, that's cool how his shadow looks kind of like a spider. This thing is like crazy ass looking. Let's uh, double click on him. Is he like still trying to get our exploration ship? He's coming around that side of the sun. Let's flip around here. Now I can't see him very well. There he is, the shadow of him. Where are we now? Did we, no, we're still here. Now, luckily we have warp. I'm not sure if that thing can warp or not, but he's coming around this side of the sun for our exploration ship. Holy cow. Uh, okay. Um, let's go up here. Let's click on that so I can see him. I couldn't see him there for a minute. Oh, he's moved out now. He's at Yitness One. So the spider thing is by their sun or their you know star, I should say. And we've moved out of there. We jumped out. So we've completely looked at this now at Yitness. It's got nothing, no resources at all. So this system looks like crap. But we're going to leave it right there this time. We've uh, encountered space spiders. Uh, we've got a spy that's actually very good at looking like a hamster, even though he looks he, he himself looks like a catfish. Uh, we're over here in Segma. Maybe we'll colonize that at some point. We'll see. We're out into other star systems. We looked at building ships. A lot happened. How long did this go on? Probably too long. Anyway, you guys are great. Thank you so much for joining me. Till next time. I had a good time. Hope you did too. Strategy Gaming Dojo out.